So when you start off working in tech, there's always the draw of working for a fang or a man company. And I can't lie, I'm no better than anybody else. I also have that dream of one day just just experiencing it, you know? And I'll, I'll make a separate video on my dream job one day. But there is also genuine value in working for a startup, especially at the start of your career. I can't even quantify the leaps and bounds I've taken in just working five months at a startup. So in this video, I'm going to be telling you all about the advantages and what it's like to be a data scientist at a startup. But I'm not here to sugarcoat things for you, so I will also mention the bad parts of working for a startup. So let's start with point number one. I can't help but feel working in a startup, you're closer both to decisions and decision makers. So startups tend to have a much flatter hierarchical structure, which means that you are closer to the person at the top. So for example, I could literally just slack my boss on any day and I could organize a meeting with him probably on that same day. Whereas at fan companies and generally big corporate structures, you usually see a middle manager at best, or maybe even just your line manager. And I believe that learning that people above you are just people as well helps to take out that intimidation factor or being scared of people above you. I'm currently just an intern, but I remember one day I was having a chat with my line manager and in a throwaway statement, I said that, oh, maybe one of the actual data scientists who's not an intern can do that. And he was quick to put his foot down and say, no, you guys are on the same level. You might be an intern, but we consider you at the same level. So again, there's not that separation between roles. Everybody feels like they're just working to one common goal. And speaking of being close to decisions, you are just able to see your work being used. I remember in the first week I joined, oh, uh, no, the second week I joined, I was given the assignment of creating a report for a client. I assumed that this was just more of a, a warm up. Like I was doing it and somebody else was doing it, then they'll show me how they did it and hand in their version to the client. But by the end of that week, I handed in my version and I saw it being sent to that client. So knowing that your work is actually making a difference and is being sent out externally to clients forces you to quickly raise the standard of your work. Second point, flexibility and adaptability. So with bigger tech companies and just big companies in particular, they're able to hire specific roles. Here's a specific data engineer, specific data scientist, specific data analyst, and this might go even more granular. But a startup just can't afford to hire that many people. So they hire a data person who has to be able to learn a bit of each of these. So on a day-to-day -day basis, in the morning, I might do some data engineering work before doing some stuff in Python, some data scientist -y work. And by the end of the day, I might be having to do analysis on that data. It might not all be in one day, but you get my point. And on top of that, I will have to present it to people. So I have to be flexible enough to learn all those different roles. And even beyond that, you have to learn stuff like presentation skills to present your findings to a client, or internally, you have to take the responsibility, create a presentation deck of why we should adopt a new piece of technology and be able to feed that back to the CEO. And when talking about this flexibility, it's not just about the technologies that you use. You also have to be highly reactive. So you might be working on a project and as soon as you hand it in, it's great. Here's the next thing. Or maybe even before you finish that work you were working on, your boss might come up to you and say, hey, I know you're doing this, but this is now the priority. Or we discovered that we don't need to do this anymore. So forget that, jump onto this instead. Point number three, it forces you to be extremely strong in your fundamentals. So depending on your role at a big company, you might just be refining a model. And that's because at those big companies, those refinements, those little 1%, 2% improvements can equate to millions or even billions of pounds. But for a startup, unless it's a data specific startup, their data department might not be the most developed thing in the world. So that means, speaking of the 80-20 rule, you get 80% of results from 20% of the work. So this fundamental 20% of work, which might just be automation, might not be in place. So you have to be able to know your fundamentals and be able to be the one to put that automation in place. So you have less time to be fancy with your models and you have to be practical and get your basics and foundations down solidly. This also translates into code you write sometimes. So I remember in my first month, I was developing this sentiment analyzer. So one day I finished the first draft. This was meant to be the first draft and showed it to my boss. And I was gonna go off and refine it, make sure it runs as efficiently as possible. My boss was like, does it run? I said, yes. And he said, okay, we have new stuff to do. So you have less time to be sexy with the work that you do. 
Point number four, domain knowledge might be even more important. So my feeling from the outside looking in is that sometimes your higher ups are able to give you the direction when you're working for a larger company. They will say, we're looking to achieve this. This is how we're going to do it. You have to implement it. And that's just outside looking in as well as what I've heard from people who work at these bigger companies. But at a startup, you have to be much more proactive, show initiative. So that means you have to know about your industry, know all the little changes, all the little tweaks so that you can then decide what would make the biggest impact and you go and implement that. So knowing your domain, all the technicalities in your domain is very important. And that's something that when I started my internship, I knew a little bit about my domain, but I'm still having to consistently level up. Okay, next point, I forgot what number point this is, but it's to do with the data. So I'm studying data science, but at my company, we do not have specific data engineers. So that means I've had to learn to source my own data. So that's data engineering work, but that's just part of the work. You also need to be able to assess your own data quality. So you may have scraped a certain bit of data using an API or maybe even gotten it from a provider, but you have to be able to examine this data so that you know whether the numbers are telling you what you want to know. And not just that this metric has a similar name to what I want to know. You have to be able to determine that data quality yourself. Next point, there might be a little bit more pressure at times and I mean this in the sense that at a big company, there's lots of colleagues who can potentially help you out. Let's say you don't know how to do this, which can only be done in, I don't know, R for some reason. At that smaller company, if nobody knows R, you have to be able to determine whether this concept is important enough that you have to learn that little bit of coding, how to do that, so that that can then be put into production. So at times your tech stack can be the bottleneck for the whole company. So there's a lot more pressure to consistently be expanding your knowledge, picking up new things, just so that you can continue to make that impact. And the penultimate point. Let's be real, at big companies, you're more likely to be paid a lot more. And there is a certain prestige attached with those companies so that it becomes easier when and if you choose to find a new job. At startups, the reality is a lot of them can only pay roughly at market rate, sometimes not even that. So you have to be willing to accept that and hope that as you grow with the company, if the company does well, maybe you get a massive pay rise, that sort of thing. And the last point is autonomy. Because of that flat structure, you don't have many middle managers just hovering over your shoulder and cross-checking your work all the time. You have the responsibility of making sure you get your stuff done by the deadline, if there even is a deadline. So a lot more autonomy. You can also decide what you think will make the impact and then go to pursue that in your own time. What's, at, what's on the clock as well. So you have to learn to allocate your time, allocate your resources effectively in order to get the greatest benefit. So this is what I've learned working as a data scientist at a startup. Maybe one day I'll be working at a fan company. You never know. But if you're wondering how I got this job in a startup, I have this video explaining how I got my very first data science job with a CV that was quite frankly, not good, as they would say. But besides that, I'm Data Nash, documenting my journey from a data science newbie who knows next to nothing to one day, one day being an elite data scientist. So if you want to follow that journey so that you can cut corners, see my mistakes and not repeat them, feel free to hit subscribe. But I'll see you in the next one. Peace.